So I grew up as a Muslim. I grew up in a Muslim household and I was taught the Islamic way of life, which includes the Hadith, the Quran, the pillars of Islam, which expands into some of the teachings of the prophets, the Prophet Muhammad, the companions, the family, saints, and these teachings then translate into how one should conduct themselves in terms of character, how you should conduct yourself with other individuals, with your environment, within yourself. And in essence, the belief is that there is no God but Allah. And that the Prophet is his final messenger. Now, for a very long time, I always realized this, but I just couldn't put my finger on it. And that is that the truth was given to me. I felt and believed in a truth that was given to me. And above that truth, there's always been an authority giving me that truth. And so I felt like something was missing. And I didn't want to derive my truth from an authority anymore. I wanted my truth or the truth to be my authority. And this is a very challenging turning point that I'm sure some of you guys have faced or are facing right now or will face. So the whole point of this video is to look at some of the challenges that come along this way. Because if you, if you are a devout religious person or you have believed so strongly and been conditioned in a particular way where your entire identity is built around a core belief system that has been given to you, when you enter the spiritual path, which involves perhaps meditation, self-reflection, introspection, self-inquiry, non-dual teachings. What you are essentially doing is you are bringing your attention to this core belief that has been given to you. And we're not interested right now whether this is the absolute truth or not. In essence, we can see where this has come from. And that alone gives it ground for questioning. And so this comes with a lot of challenges that are mostly involved with fear. Suppressed fear. If I am questioning these things, am I committing shirk? which means the renunciation of God in layman's terms. When you ask the average Muslim, what is shirk? They'll tell you that you are denouncing God, that you are not believing in God or one God, or that you are believing in polytheism, that there is more than one God. And is that truly what shirk actually means? And there's also this emphasis that shirk is the worst possible sin. That shirk is for those who will be in the pits and the bottom of the bottom levels of the hellfire. And so this creates a challenge and proposes questions of, okay, now I have I am able to just rest in what is. I am able to see through the illusion of the separate self. The separate self is recognized for what it is. And so when I'm praying, who am I praying to? 
When I'm fasting, what am I fasting for? What's the point of doing all this? Because if I am praying to someone, then I am still retaining this dualistic perspective and belief. I myself went through this particular phase and so I wanted to really create this video to shed some light on this so that hopefully it can be reconciled. Now the way the way this is very typically approached is that it's always in the connotation that you are somehow leaving Islam. And I'd like to repropose this view and actually ask a question. What if the non-dual realization is actually you entering Islam? Where Islam means to submit, to surrender, which is in some way what non-duality is. To surrender to what is, to submit, stop, to stop trying to control everything, to realize that nothing is in your control because there is no you to control. What if all of these religious teachings where you are fasting and limiting the cravings and the compulsions of the body which actually keeps the separate self or the identity intact. What if fasting loosens and dissolves these compulsions, which ultimately dissolves the conceptual self that has been conditioned over time? It's not just about the body. After some time when food, for example, doesn't become a core focus in your everyday life. Perhaps the body doesn't become the core focus of your everyday life. And so the identification with the body doesn't become the core focus either. What if certain practices such as not lying, not backbiting, looking after the needy, you know, engaging in acts of service, compassionate and kind acts of service. What if all these acts and practices and teachings are there to move towards selflessness, which in other way, another way of looking at it is the recognition that the center of the universe is not the sense of separate self. It's not the ego. It's not who you think you are. And the narrative is always for many individuals. I get so many emails, DMs, comments. People are always asking, thank you so much. I've stumbled across your video, non-duality and Islam. However, I really want you to touch on this topic because I don't know, shall I, sh shall I leave Islam? Have you left Islam? Are you still, are you still a practicing Muslim? What, like, what's your situation? And so there's this confusion, this cognitive dissonance. Well, take it like this. You don't have to view it as though you are leaving anything. If you feel like you are leaving something, then you are still a reference point. Then there is still someone there that can leave something else. And this is still living in this dualistic way. The fear of leaving Islam and committing shirk is a dualistic fear. That there is you, this entity, that is now leaving something. No. 
you have always been there. It's always been the way it is. It's impossible to commit shirk. It's impossible. And I'm going to get so much backfire on this, but it's actually impossible. You can't commit shirk. Because believing that there is no God, for an example, is just another belief. And it's no different to believing in God. Now, if you want to play around in the realm of beliefs and ideas, then you will always find yourself in this turbulent place where you are worried whether you are doing the right thing or if you are doing the wrong thing. And so this is where all this fear comes in. But leave this realm of belief. No. Find out and see it for what it is. See it for yourself. Religion is not an umbrella. It's not a ceiling. The purpose is for it to be a stepping stone for you to find out. A system for you to find out. Whether it's Islam, Christianity, Judaism, these are all systems for you to find out. Non-duality is just another system, if you like. And perhaps the whole point of this system is for the system to also then be dropped. So, actually in very deep um, Islamic circles, deep philosophical or esoteric spiritual mysticism, what, you, what you'll notice is that there's this analogy that is commonly used. That imagine you are a farmer and as a farmer, you are building the outer perimeter of your land. And once you've laid the perimeter, you hammer in the woodworks. And so now you have a hedge around your farmland. And then what you do, you look around and you say, no, let me get some bricks as well. You get some bricks. And so now you have a more firm wall as the outer perimeter. And then you say, no, let me get some metal frames to make it more secure. And so you spend the rest of your life just working on the outer perimeter and you miss the fact that you are a farmer and you haven't done one single bit of farming. The whole point of religion is for you is to create the space in life for you to be introspective. When you enter a mosque, a church or a synagogue, it's silent and it's peaceful. And so the purpose isn't that you are now feeling peaceful when you enter these places. No, it's for you to resonate with that peace and recognize that peace within you. Because that peace is only felt within you. It's not in the place. The peace, as soon as you enter the mosque and you feel this peace, perhaps, it's not in the mosque. It's within you that it, it's felt. And so when you leave, why does the peace leave? The purpose is for you to recognize that. These practices, fasting, praying five times a day, it's there to develop humility so much so where there can be absolute surrender and submission. And so for as long as you remain in this realm of belief, I believe this, I don't believe that, what shall I do? You're swapping around beliefs and you're playing around with it. You will never win. You can never win this game. So recognize that you are a farmer and actually do the farming. It's not very difficult to 
to follow a set of rules, to not steal and to not lie and to and to be kind. It's not difficult to do these things. It's not difficult to pray and to fast and to pay zakat and to do all these. It's really not difficult. So if you are truly yearning for the truth, you'll notice that the only thing that will propel you towards it is honesty and sincerity. You are so honest, you're being honest because honesty is the way of the truth. You are honest with yourself, you are honest through and through and sincere through and through. And then you could come to a place where there is no you anymore. And when there is no you, there is no leaving Islam, but there is no joining Islam. There's no leaving any religion. You are every religion and you are not every religion. And so it's not so much about right or wrong anymore. And so I invite you to, to recognize that. There is no leaving, there is no coming, there's no joining. Just see it for what it is. I have this brown skin color. And so if I stand under the sun, after some time, it will burn. If another person with a different skin color stood underneath the sun, the speed at which they may burn under the sun may differ, perhaps depending on the pigment of their skin. But this is the skin color that I have. And so I work with how long I stay under the sun. And so if you are in a particular religion, in a particular community, in a particular environment, look around you and just notice that whatever you are deciding to do, is it a form of rebellion? Are you unwilling to see that these are just the cards that have been dealt? And are these cards that have been dealt so significant? Does it really matter? What I'm trying to say here is that so many of you guys are just so worried about leaving a particular ideology or belief and at the same time want to do that and by getting hooked up in this realm of leaving or joining in this rebelliousness let's be honest it's a rebelliousness you lose the it's besides the point anyway and rebellion or any form of conflict to some extent is is duality there is something and someone there's someone and something to fight with there is so much resistance no play the part you're a christian be the best christian you can be you're a muslim be the best muslim you can be play the part and recognize that you are playing the part and allow truth to be your authority not authority be your truth. This is really the pinpoint here. For as long as you allow the truth to provide you with, for as long as you allow the authority to provide you with the truth, there will always be a struggle. Because as you do this self-inquiry, as you observe, you realize that I have the truth, but there's something higher. 
But when you allow the truth to be your authority, then nothing else is higher than that truth. So it's not about leaving or joining. It's not about whether you are committing shirk or not. These are all besides the point. Some of these things are perhaps laid out so that some people who don't spend any time doing any self-inquiry or self-reflection or introspection or whatever it is, some people just aren't interested in the truth. And so, okay, that's fine. You're not interested in the truth, but here's a guideline. Follow these guidelines because if you don't, you may perhaps jeopardize other people who are looking to recognize the truth. And so it's a system that works in every way possible. There is no right or wrong way. And if you actually look into it sincerely and honestly, whatever religion it is, it's never been about the religion itself. It's always been about what the religion is trying to point to. The Prophet Muhammad himself said that he who knows himself knows his Lord. So there's, so there's only one thing to know. There's only one thing to know. I hope that this clears things up. Yeah, no need to play this game that's in the realm of belief. Shall I believe this? Shall I not? Shall I swap this out? Whenever there's resistance, some sort of rejection, if you're not allowing things to just be, this is duality anyway. The fear is a manifestation of duality. So, thank you so much for listening. This is Hassan from the Spiritual Walks and we are all on a journey towards the truth.